Yes, God. Now, Father God, we just ask that our minds will be open, Father God, to be able to receive that which you want to give us in this hour, oh God. We ask, Lord God, that you will speak through us even as we open our mouth. You speak through us, Lord God. Cause, Lord God, our loins to be girded by with the truth of your divine word, oh God. And let it, Lord God, dispel any, any, any falseness, Lord God, any lies, any deceptions of the enemy, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. For our heart's desire, Lord God, is to walk around with your truth, to know your truth, Father God, to know your truth, Lord God, to know your truth, Father God, to know your truth, oh God. Cause your light, Lord God, to dispel any darkness, Father God, that may be hindering us, hindering us Father God, from even hearing your divine voice, Father God, in this hour, oh God. We just surrender this time once again to you, oh God. Move in such a way that you may be magnified and glorified, that you may be honored, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you once again and we say amen. Studying the mind of Christ. That's what we've been studying. Oh, praise God. Yes, we've, we've been oh, studying glory. the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. Mm. Um, now, those of you who have been in class, have did you go back and review any of your notes? So that you can remind yourself of, you know, where we are. You rude a little bit. It's a good thing I did some review notes. All righty then. <laughs> okay. Uh, one of the very first scriptures that we've actually talked about was from Philippians chapter 2. Verses 5 through 7. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7. 5 through 7. And for, for all of you newcomers, Michelle is a fast speaker. But praise God, we have a page called Journey that you can get on in order to go back and review, and review. so yes. you can get your notes. Yes, I do have a tendency to when I get started, I start Journeys moving. on Facebook. Yes. yes, thank you. Um, but if you have any, um, I do give time for everybody to make comments, you know, um, or if you have a, have a question or you just want to make a comment because something that the Lord has, has spoken to you, you are more than welcome to actually do that. All right. Um, as I said, Philippians chapter two, verses five through seven, and we said, "Let this mind," and it says, "Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men." And remember, we talked about the fact that where it says, "Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus." It means to allow the same mind that Christ had to also be in you. Don't think that is robbery to be equal with God because Christ did and if Christ dwells on the inside of us then it's not robbery to think that you can be equal with God because the word says that right here so he's saying allow don't allow the mind that's in Christ Jesus to also dwell in you don't think that you cannot have the mind of Christ and don't think that you cannot operate the same way Christ operated when he was here on the earth because he's saying that if I dwell in you, I've already given you all of who I am. So therefore, the same way I walk, the same things that I did, the same things that, that they heard me do and saw me do, he's saying, I'm allowing you to have that same opportunity. If you would just renew your minds with my word, then you can operate the same way I operated. I looked. At, I was looking up this morning about the correlation between the heart and, and the mind, because there is such a correlation. And so many of us have heartaches, you know, the things that we've gone through. And one of things that I found out was that it said that when you begin to put the right things in your Come mind what it does is that it begin it allows the heart to operate the way it's supposed to operate. The heart was already meant to give out love. It was already meant, it was created to be able to do that. But what happens is that because of all the stuff that we've gone through and because we have a tendency to put in our minds the wrong kinds of things and watch the wrong kinds of things, what happens is that it stops the heart from falling functioning in a healthy way. So he's saying when you get in the word and you begin to renew your mind with the word of God and cause your old thoughts to die off, it allows the heart to operate in a healthy way. Yes. And it's able to give out the love that it's supposed to give. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that awesome? Yes. yes. That is so awesome. 
It really is. And, you, and, and when you think about it, think about the times that even in marriages or, or even, in, in, even in just any kind of relationship or even on the job where you become so frustrated, you know, and it's like, okay, I really don't have any more to give. I don't, you know, I'm just frustrated. I'm tired. I'm irritated. If you really look at what you've been depositing in you during that time, you will find out that you have not been given enough of your renewing your mind enough in order for your heart to give out what your heart needs to give out. So anytime we get to that place where it feels like I just can't go on, I'm just, I'm so tired, I'm so irritated, I'm so frustrated. It's the Holy Spirit saying, look, I need you to renew your mind more. I need you to get in the word more because it is important that your heart gives out the love of Christ. It's yes. important that you don't hold back the love of Christ because it comes from the heart. <coughs> and it can only come out if we renew our minds on a consistent basis. All right. Amen. Um, remember I said the mind is such a phenomenal organ. Why waste it? I've said that to you. While our brains have the capacity to hold and contain an excessive amount of information, it is like a sponge. Whatever you get it, it will absorb. Robin knows that because she teaches children. So whatever you put in those children's minds, will it not absorb it? So if we give it the right thing, then it's going to absorb the actual right thing. The thing is that you cannot take it, call our mind, try to um, allow our minds to absorb negative and then to absorb positivity. It just doesn't work that way. So it has to absorb one thing or the other. You have to choose what you're going to put in there. Because if you put in two different things, then the mind begins to start war. Remember, Joyce Myers even said that the mind is the battlefield. And it is the battlefield. So but you'll find your mind operating in a state of peace when you begin to put in the words of Christ that we're supposed to put in instead of trying to put in the words of Christ and then allowing the negativity that's in the world to also consume your mind it'll cause you to go into warfare it'll cause you to go into a state of depression it'll cause you to go into a state of denial it'll cause you to go into a place of refilling rejection so it's very important that we take that we that we put a lot of importance on our brains because God created our brains for a specific thing all right Okay. Yeah. The information you choose to put in it is your choice. The brain contains the mind, the will, and the emotions, which it comprises the soul. It comprises everything. Remember we handed out those pictures once before, and it showed everything is in the brain. Everything that we need is in the brain. So if my brain gets what it needs, then my body is going to get what it needs because my heart is going to tell my body. My brain is going to tell my heart to function right. My heart is going to speak to the rest of my body and cause my body to function in the way that it is supposed to function. A lot of times when we have sicknesses, as I said before, it really does come from what we've been depositing because we haven't been putting enough of the right stuff in, in our minds, in our brain. So then what happens when I don't put enough of it in there, then the heart can't give out the signals to the rest of the body that you're healthy, you're healthy, you're healthy, you're healthy. So if I if I allow the negativity to be in there or my frustration to sit in there, what it sends is a signal to my heart. And believe it or not, it really does wear on the heart. It causes many people to have heart attacks. That's the reason why a lot of people have heart attacks. It's because of the stress that they're carrying. And see, we won't be carrying stress if we're renewing our minds the way we're supposed to renew our mind because if I renew my mind then I'm casting all my care on him and I'm not being anxious about anything but by my prayers and supplications I'm letting all my requests be made known unto God so that what the peace of God which surpasses all understanding can guard my heart as well as my mind through yes, Christ Jesus yes come amen. on now amen yes, yes all right yes, yes any comments before I go on she warned you, I talk fast. <laughs> Sometimes I think it's we need to ask when we're in that frustrated for more grace. Because yeah. we, we do not have enough grace. And God told me one time that when you're frustrated, you're out of grace. Ask for more grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I can somewhat agree with that. But then in another way... I would say, just accept the grace. Receive. We just have receive it, yeah. it because we already yeah. have it. You know, it's just, yeah. I mean, we already have it. And I think we, we do have a difficult time when we are frustrated. We forget the covenant, the new covenant that we're actually under. 
you know, and when we're under that covenant of grace, everything that we need pertaining to life and godliness has already come, been come on, dispensed on, for us. It's already sitting there. It's already there. And he's saying you got to step in and you need to just step in and just receive it and know that it's already there. I think a lot of times we, because I was taught that we need to just ask, 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 ask. Well, when I first come to Christ, that is what I'm going to have to do. But once I mature in Christ, then it's my responsibility to know I no longer have to ask. I need to just step in and receive it because it's already done. It's already there for me. You know, it's just a question of, it's almost like, you know, it, 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 it's, it's the difference between being a child and being a son of God. Come on now. Being a child and a son of God. A child always asks for permission. Think about our children. Always ask, God, can I have, can I have, can I have, can I have, daddy, can I have, mommy, can I have, I want, I want, I want, I want. I want. When, you, when you start maturing in Christ, it's no longer asking, going back to what uh, Cook said. It's no longer asking. Now when you move into being in the maturity of Christ, it's no longer, I'm not asking. Now I'm stepping in and I'm just receiving what God has already done. I don't have to ask for healing. I don't have to ask for more grace. I, I don't have to ask for better health. I don't have to ask for the mind of Christ. Why? Because he's already given it to me. Mm -hmm. yes, thank and I have to know that I already have it. And step in there and receive it. And that is the place that God really wants to get us to. That is the reason why he uh, started me with the teaching on the mind of Christ. Is for us to understand the difference. He said, look, I want to move you from that place of being an, an infant. That place of being a child. And I want to move you into a mature state. There was a word that was spoken just when we started doing this. And it came from God. The Lord gave it to Carrie. I don't have it on here. But the Lord gave it to Carrie. And it said, and he talked about how he wanted us to be moved into a, a higher place of maturity that we need to be more accountable to the words and stuff that were spoken. Do, do you have it, Carrie, to be able to read it? Um, and I'll let her read it. To move to a greater place of maturity because we've been staying in that place of being a child for long enough. And if you stay in that place of being a child, then how can we expect that when people come into the kingdom of God and we're still children, how can we teach them to be a son of God when mm -hmm. we're still a child of God? You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you understand? So so God is saying, look, it's time for you to move into a place of maturity. Go ahead, Karen, read that. A uh, storm is brewing above this place, a hurricane cloud. Daughters, take your place, take your stand. The gates of hell cannot prevail against you. Wake up, sleepers. I call you to a labor, a labor of love. No longer do you need to be spoon fed. You will feed those who are hungry and set those who are bound free. Yes. So it's time to move, to move to that higher place. And, and not to be going, even going back to uh, the scripture that we just read, let this mind be in you. Going back to don't, don't become afraid of being able to move in that place. Because he's already supplied you. He's already provided you with what you need in that higher place of maturity. He's already given you that there. So don't be afraid to get in that place and to stay in that place. Now, it does not mean that you might, you know, you might make a mistake. But it's all right. You, you know, you really are covered. But don't be afraid to get in that place and to stay in that place because that is where God wants you because if you're not in your place then how can you help other people to get in their place and help them to stay in that place because the kingdom of God is about moving forward it's from glory to glory to glory yeah. to glory to glory so if I'm staying in this realm of glory and God is saying but I want you up here then I'll never be able to help anybody else get up there because I'm I've become comfortable or and I'm too afraid to move to this place well yeah in a higher place it is more responsibility and you're and and you are held at a, at a greater accountability at that place. But God said, but don't be afraid of that. Do not do not be afraid of that. Get in that place and stay in that place. Because when you're in that place is when you really will begin to see God move and operate at a greater place. I think the problem is that, you know, when we're children and we ask for things. And, and the majority of the time, the, our, as parents, the parents, what we want to do is we really want to give our kids what they're asking for. And we just like to see that joy. And then as they mature, you think about it. As our children mature, it's like, you ain't getting ready to keep coming asking me for that. So it's like, no, I'm not going to give you that. I'm not going to give you that. And I think that's the problem that we have in the body of Christ is that if I stay a child, then God will keep spoon feeding me. So then I don't have to be really accountable. I don't have to grow up. It means I don't have to do too much more. But when you become a son of God, it becomes you have more accountability that God is placing on you. So that means that God's not getting ready to spoon feed you. So you got to move out of your place of being so comfortable and move into that position that God is saying you are are a son of mine. You are no longer a child, but you are a son of mine. I've given you everything that you need. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of yeah. puts me in mind of 
I'm going to just use my son, 17, but he's my baby. As a baby, when he got hungry, I would say, I've got to go feed my baby. Mm -hmm. i got to go cook. Well, he's a young man now, but I still say i got to go cook for my baby. <laughs> but he's quite capable mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of doing it on his own. Right, but because right. I didn't go ahead and say, it's there, you do it. He hasn't gone ahead. He has to feel like he has to keep asking because I haven't just said it's there. Go do it. It just mm -hmm. kind of, you know, even mm -hmm. with the, even with our kids as yep. babies, they ask yep. us for a popsicle, and we go and we get them the popsicle. But it's only because they can't reach the freezer. <laughs> right. But uh -huh. then once right. they get older and they've matured, yes. they can reach the freezer. There's no need to come back and ask. Can yes. I get a popsicle? Yes. And they quickly learn. I'm tall enough now. I can go get what I want. Right. <laughs> that is true. That is That's very good. true. And I think, and we get, and we get so, and that is, with you even giving that that uh, example, that is that's another reason why we actually don't grow into that maturity that God wants us to grow into because of the fact we try to keep our own children as children. And, and, you know, we want them to be mature in this area, and in this area, we want them to but still be babies. Yeah. You know, it, it, yeah. It, 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 it has to be one or it has to be the other. And that's the way, you know, and when you do that in the natural, really, that's the kind of relationship that you have with God also. It's like, okay, I want to be mature here, but I still want to be be a baby over here. The mm. Word says to come and say, act like a child, not not being a child, come you know. On. So the whole thing is that we have to, we have to change up our natural thing of how we're doing so that we respond to God in the right way but because we operate in that place of fear like if I let him go oh God what's gonna happen you could yeah, right. What's you know so it's that thing of allowing again trusting God in that area to know that okay I've done everything that I feel like I could do I can't do anything else now I've got to trust you that what's been deposited in them that God you're going to take care of that if I take care of your business I know you're going to take care of mine I'm not going to worry about it I already know that they're covered so God is saying if you can do that in the natural then you will learn to do that with him as being your spiritual daddy but if it's very difficult for you to let your children go or even not your children it could be spiritual children it could be your biological children it could even be a friendship it could be a spouse anything like that if you have difficulty releasing them into the hand of God then surely you're having problems operating as a son of God that's good that's mm -hmm. good I'm saying that I went to go sign Justin up for school mm -hmm. and they gave me a paper to have him fill out because he's 17, mm -hmm. he's got to get a school permission for me to get information. Okay. Oh, at 17? I or thought 18? that's hideous. I thought it was 18. <laughs> wow. They gave, well, it is supposed to be 18, but because he's close, oh, yeah. they gave right. me the paper for mm -hmm. him to fill out for me to be able to get information. And my first thought was because Stephen hid his and didn't fill it out. Yeah. Oh, baby, you filling this out. I'm going to stay on you. <laughs> But I've got to, he's going off to college next year. That's right. I can't get that information in college. So it's like a process right now. Lord's going to have to speak to me real hard not to make him sign that paper. But it, it, as you were speaking, this, that paper came to mind as you're going to let him go and not make him sign it and trust that what you've already instilled in him is still working here at 17. Well, see, it's really a question of giving him that, because when you're talking about maturity, it's not a question of saying, okay, you're going to sign this and I'm going to see you sign it. No, it's a question of, I trust what I've deposited in you now is, is your decision. If you want to sign it, then sign it. If you don't, that's fine with me. Now, mm -hmm. let's see how mature you are. Yeah. Give him. Oh, you ain't seen how mature I'm am I? No. You oh. give, him, him. <laughs> give him the choice to decide whether or not he wants to sign it. Let him make the decision. Ask Why don't you keep looking at me forever? Let, let him, because, it, because it, 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 then it places you in that place of really learning how, do you really trust God? Do you really trust what you've deposited in him? Because whether he signs it or he doesn't, it does not say that he's trying to hide anything. So do you really trust God? 
give him the choice to decide whether or not he wants to do it. Mm. And I'm not, I'm just offering you the information that's up to you. Well, he won't be helping me put this video up. Oh. <laughs> huh? He won't help me do this video. Uh -uh. You, know, you know, he always, he always helps and he always oh, catches. Oh, you don't want him to see that. <laughs> Okay, in Romans 12 and 2, it says, be, do not be conformed. Romans chapter 12, yes. verse 2. It says, do not be conformed to this world, fashioned after and adapted to its, its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideas and its new attitudes, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. That's from um, the Amplified, all right? Mm -hmm. Renew means to make like new. It means to restore to freshness, vigor, or perfection. To make new spiritually, to regenerate, to restore to existence, or to make extensive changes in, or to rebuild. So where it's saying that I need you to renew your mind, God is saying I need you to allow your mind to be rebuilt. I need you to allow it to come to perfection. I need you to allow it to be restored back to freshness, how it was in the Garden of Eden. That's what he's saying. All right? To access the kingdom of God within, the old way of thinking must be destroyed and renewed with a new way of thinking. And remember I said that the old mind is a mind that's set in time. All right? And the new mind is a mind that's set in eternity. Well, what am I saying? What I'm saying is that when you think with the old mind, it keeps you in a box. You don't come out of that. You just you just think within this box. The new mind, which is the mind of Christ, thinks in eternity. It's, it's, it's a mind that is limitless. It is just, it's limitless. There are, there's nothing that's held back from you. Because your imagination is so large, your creativity is so large and humongous that it's set in eternity where there is no time. Which means that whatever God shows me on the day through my spiritual mind, it means that because it's not set in a time, that means that it might happen, it could happen immediately, it could happen tomorrow, and then again it could be five years from now. But it's not set in time. There's no time stamp on it. And what we do, we get caught up in the fact that when God shows us things, we put like a time limit on. Well, I've been waiting for five years. Oh. I've been waiting for, especially when it comes to spouses. <laughs> been waiting 15 years for him to be saved, Lord. Or healing. Lord, I mean, if we count it up. We, yes. count it up. we count it up how long we've been waiting for, for this thing to happen okay. when he's saying that when I showed it to you when I spoke it to you I showed it to you in eternity not in time so I never place the time on remember the word says that a day with the Lord is like a thousand years there is no time in eternity none whatsoever so if he's spoken to you about you being healed then certainly your healing is already there God has no time limit on that if he's spoken it then surely his promise is going to come to pass there's no time limit. The only time we need to use time is that when we're testifying and saying, you know what, I waited for, for 15 years or however many years in order for this to come to pass, but I knew it was going to come to pass. Daily, I was waiting for the manifestation of the word. I didn't know it was going to take 15 years. I didn't know it was going to take 20 years, but I knew every day I woke up looking forward to God's promise being birthed as to what he said over my life or concerning my family. Mm -hmm. Now what we do is when he speaks a word, mm -hmm. we'll look for maybe seven days. And then after seven days, we start getting a little frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> especially as women, because we have to deal with our emotions so much. So especially as women, because we have to deal with our emotions, especially during that time of the month. And even mm -hmm. for women that are going through menopause, because of the fact we have to constantly deal with that emotional state. So it's like after seven days, because I told Martha, I said, we have like seven good days out the whole month. The rest of the time, <laughs> you got to... You got to really have your mind focused because, you know, the enemy just comes in and plays havoc. 
because of our emotion. So it's like seven days, we wait really good. And then after that, it's like, all right, I didn't wait it long enough. What is the problem? <laughs> so God is saying we got to get to that, have that mindset of knowing that when I've spoken this promise to you, I spoke it to you in eternity, not in time. It's going to come to pass. So daily, I need you to renew your mind so that when you get up every day, you can tell yourself that the promise is coming today, today. The promise is going to come. It's going to be manifested today. It's going to be manifested today. It's going to be manifested today. And if you say that every single day, then surely the day is going to come when it will surely manifest itself. And you won't be so caught up in the time. Because your mind is going to be on you know that it's coming to pass. All right? Okay. Any comments? No comments. All right. Renewing the mind is literally like rewiring our thinking process to renew ourselves with the kind of mind we already had before the sin nature. The mind that Adam thought with in the Garden of Eden. Remember I told you that. So it's like rewiring what we already had there. And when I rewire it, it causes the old stuff to die off. It causes it to decay. It causes it to de be destroyed. So that the only thing that's left are the words of Christ. All right. When we renew our minds, it causes, the con it causes our conscience to come alive, to be quickened, to come out of the dead state, the old way of thinking. When the old thoughts die off, only the word of God is left, which is the kingdom of God mindset. All right. Now, when the, these thoughts die, the soul becomes linked up with the spirit mind as one. So when I'm renewing my mind and I'm causing my old thoughts to die off, what happens is that now my soul becomes linked up with my new mind. So now it's 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 operating as one. So now it's coming into agreement with the mind of Christ. And when my soul comes into agreement with the mind of Christ, then that means that my whole self will come into spiritual alignment with the kingdom of God. With the word that he's already spoken. Mm -hmm. But it can't come into alignment if my mind is not in agreement with the mind of Christ. If my thoughts are not subject to the lordship of Christ. That's why it's so important to renew the mind on a daily basis. That's why the enemy works especially hard to keep us from really getting into the word and renewing our minds the way we need to renew our minds. Now it's not saying that you need to get in there you got to spend five hours a day. No the Holy Ghost needs what you need for that moment in time. So if you allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you for that day, then your mind is going to get what it needs so that that old thought, whatever it may be, can die off and the thoughts of Christ can be left in that place. And, and when you do that, what happens is that when you begin to come up against uh, uh, come up against the enemy or you come up against a whole lot of struggles, a whole lot of things that are going on in your life, when you've been depositing what you need to deposit in your mind, what happens is that, you be, and I've said this to you before, is that what begins to come out of you are the words of Christ that you've deposited on the inside of you. Your mind begins to start warring. You haven't even opened your mouth, but your mind begins to start warring against what the enemy is trying to do on the inside of you and then you'll start opening your mouth and start speaking and decreeing the word of God that the word that what God has said but what we do is because we're not depositing enough in us and we're not allowing the word to work the way it needs to work so when I'm in a struggle or when I'm in a hard or a difficult place then what I do is I allow my struggle or my difficulty to overwhelm me and to consume me and, it, and I forget what God has already said because I allow the, the issue or the problem to become larger and greater than what the word of God is. But remember what God said is that the old mind is a mind that's set in time and the new mind is a mind that's set in eternity. So if I've renewed my mind then what happens is that when I come up against a struggle or a problem because it's set in eternity that means that it's so much larger than what my problem is because my problem is an old mindset. It's in the box. Oh my God. And it sits inside of of eternity Jesus so it becomes larger than what the issue is oh my because that's what God is he's uh -huh. larger than what the problem is and that's why the enemy works so hard to keep us from renewing our minds because our minds will have the capacity to be so much larger than what the issue is good yes any comments good. Yes, yes. Amen. Okay. Um, I just I want to share this little bit that God had given me um, that's right in line with this. 
because we're on thoughts. In my Old Testament, it is written, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. Mm -hmm. This is true, yet I say, let my thoughts be your thoughts. Let my ways be your ways. Is it not written in my new covenant, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ? Mm -hmm. Let it be. This is the beginning of understanding. This is the beginning of turning. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mind speaks. And do not your words begin with a thought? And do not your words direct your answer? Actions, yes. For your words do indeed turn you in the direction for which they are sent. Choose to order your conversation aright. Is it not written that those that fear me shall speak of me one to another in these conversations, and me are recorded in a book of remembrance for those that truly fear me and meditate on my name? And I assure you, unlike man, I record nothing that is not of eternal value. I implore you to choose my words that you mm. might turn. Yes. My words are truth. And they are life. None of my words fall to the ground. My words go forth and they do not return into me void. But they accomplish exactly what I designed them to accomplish. And prosper in the very thing for which I sent them forth. Do you not find this to be true from Genesis to Revelation and generation to generation? Do you not find this to be true in my son Jesus? Who I give you as the perfect example. Mm -hmm. He only spoke what he heard of me. He only did what he saw of me. If you want to truly fear me, if you want to truly worship me and worship me in spirit and in truth, mm -hmm. you must set your heart to understand. You must turn. Yes. And that turning begins yes. in here. The enemy, the enemy works with our mind the way that it works. He uses it against us. Mm -hmm. What we're being encouraged to do here is to work the way our brain actually works. Work it for us. We have 60,000 to 90,000 thoughts yep. going on in mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. And many of them don't even warrant our attention, just like our involuntary muscles. We need not to have to be able to pay attention to every single thought. But we have the right, the obligation, the responsibility to pay attention and deal with any thought that is contrary to the word. Mm -hmm. it, it's not ours. Just because it comes into our head doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's ours. Mm -hmm. But it's ours once we agree. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's ours once we attach yeah. some feelings to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we start attaching agreement and feelings to our thoughts, we have to take notice. What am I attaching feelings and my time yes. and all of those things? That's right. What kind of thoughts am I attaching all of that? too because yeah. it solidifies in here and, yeah. and it creates a stronghold yeah. it's the way the mind the brain actually works but it can be undone it doesn't have to be a done deal but once it is solidified it kind of goes on automatic so anything that's trying to get in that's true that could be contrary to that yeah. to undo it yeah. we have to consciously deal with it right That's you right. know um right. to break it to break it down yeah. so that then our mind can go on an automatic in in a positive way right that's right you know that's right that's right you know because it's hard to get past that filter once you've already put it into a belief right it's in my belief system this is what i believe by myself i'm always late mm -hmm. this is what i believe by myself I, I prayed this and prayed this and it hasn't happened so you know you know, I guess it's just not meant for me. That's not what God said. Right. You know, right, I'm standing right. on his promise. But Amen. Anyway. That's good. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Colossians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3 says. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. It says, focus your mind on things above, not yes. on the things here on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with the Messiah in God. Remember I told you that focus means to position your mind in such a way. That's one of the things that Ram was talking about. Position your mind in such a way that you're thinking about the things above. Things in eternity, not things here on the earth, which is set in a time. It's set in time. And when, uh, as I said, when we get promises from God, what we do is we focus in, here on the earth. Which the earth is set in eternity. I mean, I'm sorry, it's set in time. And we focus here on the earth instead of focus, keeping our mind focused up here, which is eternity. And, and if you keep your mind focused up here, if you keep it positioned up here, then you know <laughs> that that which God has spoken, it is going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. It has to show up because, you know, he does not lie. 
Come he on, don't lie. Come on now. He does not lie. He does not. It's impossible for God to lie. <laughs> it's impossible for him to go against what he has already spoken. So, and remember I told you before that sometimes, you know, we're going through and we'll read the promises of God and we'll know the promises of God. But sometimes what you need to do is you need to ask God for a prophetic word, a rhema word. And when you get that prophetic word and that rhema word, you want to see a vision. And sometimes that can help keep you, uh, keep, help keep your mind positioned up here instead of positioned down here. Because sometimes it's difficult for some people to hold on to a promise. Sometimes people need a prophetic word. It's like I need a rhema word to hold on to. I know what the promise said. I know it said by his stripes I'm healed. But Lord, I need a prophetic word from you. I need a rhema word right now that I can hold on to. I've been holding on to your promise. But I need a prophetic word, a rhema word that I can hold on to right now in order for me to keep moving forward. And there's nothing wrong with asking for that. There's nothing wrong with asking for that. All right? In Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, it says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, come on, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you have learned and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Paul was telling the Philippian church, I know you're going through a lot of stuff. I, I know you're going through a lot of stuff. And one of the Philippian churches is one of the most generous churches that Paul had ever come, come up again. I mean, too, because they believed in really giving. But they had a whole lot of other stuff that would, they, it wasn't that they were rich. The Philippian church was not rich, but they had the heart of yeah, Christ. The heart and they gave from the heart of Christ. And Paul was telling them, I know that you're going through. I know you have a lot of struggles. But he's saying, look, don't think about those things. I don't want your mind to meditate on the negativity on what you don't have but meditate on what God said. Meditate on things that are praiseworthy. Meditate on things that are lovely. Meditate on things that are true and honorable. Why? Because those are things that are set in eternity. That's what the Father is made of. Those are his characteristics. That's the mind of Christ. That's good. So you got to, you have to, we have to make a decision to meditate on the right things. Mm -hmm. You got to make that choice yourself because it's not going to be forced. I mean, it really isn't. We, we can meditate on negativity and what's going wrong, what this person said and what this diagnosis is, or we can choose to meditate on what the word says. Mm -hmm. That's our decision. And you get the fruit of it. Yes. It's our decision. Either way, you're going to get the fruit of whichever way we decide. You decide. All right? Okay, now somebody tell me, um, what is the mind of Christ? What is the mind of Christ? What is the mind of Christ? The will and heart of the Father. Yeah. The Word. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Eternity. Hmm? Eternity. Eternity. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. It's That's humble. Good. Yeah. That's good. It all goes into into one place. I know y'all have to remember this. I've got all this right here, but I'm trying to think of which one you're wanting. <laughs> I'm like, what part do you okay, want? Which 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 part is it? No, not not that one. It's before that one. Before? <laughs> yes, it is. Is it the separate to separate mentally? Uh, no. Or just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember, I told you that the that the uh, Christ mind, the mind of Christ, is a kingdom mindset. Oh, remember I said oh. that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The very beginning. It's a kingdom mindset. It's the it's the very thing that um, simply a process by the Holy Spirit. I'm I'm my Father. Yes. I am. I am my, my Father. Are one. one. Yes. The one with God and Jesus. Jesus yes. Walk in God consciousness. Yes. That's yes. All I got. yes. That's good. That's okay. exactly what Anna and Robin were saying. It is it is a kingdom mindset. It's a kingdom mindset. The mind of Christ is a kingdom mindset. And a kingdom mindset is a whole other kingdom. It's not this kingdom. It's the kingdom of God. 
Okay, it's a kingdom mindset, and that kingdom mindset is a mindset that is set in eternity, like I told you, all right? It's set in eternity, all right? It's a process that only that can only be done by the Holy Spirit. We can't do it. Only the Holy Ghost can actually give us that kind of mindset, that, and, that, and that's only by living a life of surrender and a life of abandonment of whatever our agendas may be, but surrendering our will so that the Holy Spirit can do the work that only the Holy Spirit can do, all right? Um, it is God's supernatural thoughts, you know, and it's produced in our lives through His supernatural power. All right, remember we talked about that. His dunamis power. It can only be produced through the Holy Spirit. It can't be done any other way. You know, I like to always talk about you can read a whole bunch of books and everything and have all kind of information, all kind, all kinds of knowledge. But without the Holy Spirit giving you the revelation, without Him giving you the understanding, all that information really means nothing. It, it means nothing. It's not going to do anything for you. Not, not a single thing. All right. Um, let's see. Um, in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He was not talking about a place. He was talking about a state of mind. Remember I told you that? A state of being. A state, a state of being. You got to get the revelation that you are the righteousness of God, of God, all right, through Christ. And the things that your heart desires, it will begin to be birthed up and out of you. So it really is. You got to remember that, again, it's a kingdom mindset. It's a mindset that's set in eternity. It's not a mindset that's set here, okay? And when you think about a kingdom, think about a kingdom, even over in England, how large a kingdom is all right how large a kingdom is and how a kingdom actually operates because you have your king you have your queen you know you have the other people that are underneath there so you got to think about a kingdom mindset so it's so much larger than what we have perceived it to be than what we've allowed it to be because we've tried to take what God has placed as uh, eternal um, type of kingdom and we've tried to place it in a time here on the <laughs> earth and it just does not operate that way all right. Okay. But then also remember, just that there is a kingdom of God, um, there is also a kingdom of the enemy. So just as God uh -huh. has a kingdom, so does the enemy. He also has a kingdom, and they work very. And that is one of the things that the enemy knows is because we do not understand a kingdom mindset, and we do not understand kingdom authority and the way to walk in a kingdom. You know, the enemy knows that, so he uses that against us. But see, his his kingdom is set up very strategically. I mean, they operate just accordingly and they know that and they take advantage of the fact that we don't know it because we have not taken out the time to find out mm -hmm. all right well, it's not the way our society is run no they it's not understand it better in places like england <laughs> yes they do yeah, yes well, they, they do kings, yeah. Okay. yeah they you know yes they do but then it goes back to as god says um in his word to study yourself to prove unto god you mm -hmm. know study your study to show yourself approved unto god rightly dividing the word of truth well the whole thing is that i think for years what we have done is that we've studied to show ourselves approved unto man and not unto god mm -hmm. you know unto man and not unto god and i've heard the scripture quoted many times study to show yourself approved you know rightly dividing the word of truth and they completely take out God. Com don't even, don't, don't even say that. Why? Because man wants you to study to show yourself approved unto him so you can get his stamp of approval. If you haven't studied enough, if you haven't gone to the right school, if you're not in the right church, then I, if you don't get my approval, then you don't get no approval. When God is saying, I didn't tell you to get approval from man. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, study to show yourself approved unto me. And then when I, when it's necessary for me to, to utilize a man in order to cause you to be elevated, then I'll do that. But study to show yourself approved unto me, not unto man. Stop trying to get, you know, their, their, their pat on the back. Stop trying to get their recognition. Because if man gives you recognition and if they elevate you, then they have the authority to demote you also. And God said, if you study to show yourself approved unto me, rightly dividing the word of truth, when I elevate you, there is nothing that a man can do to demote you. Because when I place you in a place, not a man on this earth or a demon can touch you and move you from where I've designated you. But when you allow man to elevate you, they will surely demote you. You come under their authority. You come under their decisions. You come under their rules and under their regulations. And when you mess up, they will surely move you. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, they will you. move you. <laughs> They'll move you. It's promotion is of the Lord. It's only of the Lord. It's only 
of the Lord. But you have to get to the place where you trust what God is doing in you. You have to trust that the God that is in you is bigger than any man or woman that you may come up against. Huh. That yeah. he is larger than that. Yes. And that he's the one that orders your footsteps. Yes. He orders your footsteps and causes you to go in the way that you should go. Not man. He utilizes man in order for his plan to be fulfilled and in order for us to fulfill our destiny. But he only uses them for that. Not for elevation. Only God can give elevation and keep you in the place that you're supposed to be. Only he can keep you there. All right? Uh, remember I said the purpose of the mind of Christ in us is that we might know the things freely given to us by God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, it says... Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. There's an intimacy that God wants us to have with him, all right, that we have not really attained to. And a lot of the reason that we have not is because we don't understand the word intimacy. We don't understand what that means. And we've, we've contaminated it so much with thinking that it has to do uh, with sex or, you know, it has to do, it just has to do with sex. It really does not have to do with, intimacy is a closeness. It's a, it's a heart thing. It's like um, when you become intimate with the Lord, it's like his heart actually beats. The, your heart beats like his heart. It's like it beats at the same beat. You'll recognize that. And even even in a marriage, or, you know, when a husband and wife really begin to become as one, really become really become intimate. And I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about really become as one, unified the way that the word is. We're supposed to be unified as husband and wife. Then the hearts. And I've heard people say this. Their hearts begin to beat at the same beat. You, you can't even distinguish between the two unless you go to a doctor. Because they beat at the same pace. And that's the same thing when you become intimate with Jesus. It'll beat the exact same way. That's what intimacy is. It operates the exact same way. It's the closest, but we become so afraid um, of being close. You know, because we've been hurt in so many different ways. Whether it's by um, a spouse whether it's by a boyfriend, whether it's by a teacher, whether it's by some other kind of relationship, we've been hurt so much in trying to be intimate with people, having a close relationship with people, that we have a tendency, we put up like a wall there. So then we become afraid to become real deeply intimate with the Lord because we don't understand that. And we think that if I do that, then what am I going to have to give up? You know, am I going to get hurt? Because we look at our relationship with him as we do our relationship with other people. To be intimate, you have to be vulnerable. Yes, you do. And yes, in the world, yes, that vulnerability is weakness. Yes. And you're exposing yes. it, exposing yes. your weaknesses. Yes. But with God, He knows all anyway. It's like Adam and Eve in the original state. In the yes. Garden, they were naked. Yes. But when yes. they so kind of. The intimacy was broken. Yes. They wanted to cover up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's what we do. That's exactly what we do yeah. because we have a problem trying to be vulnerable. Protect ourselves. Yeah, we do. It's, it's, we do. We actually do. We put up this, this thing, this protective barrier mm -hmm. to protect ourselves from being hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like I only go so far. You know, instead of, and not recognize that when we build that, that, that healthy, intimate relationship with the Lord, then what comes out of it is that as I am um, getting involved with other people, as I'm building other relationships, it's not going to affect me adversely if they do something wrong. Or mm -hmm. even if I do something wrong. It's not going to affect me adversely. Why? Because I've built a healthy, intimate relationship with the Lord. And out of that, then I can build healthy relationships with other people. So that even if they mess up, or when they mess up, because surely when you're dealing with people, yes. surely somebody gonna say something silly. <laughs> they gonna do something silly, and then I, you won't you won't find yourself getting so offended mm -hmm. all the time. You won't walk around with offense all the time, being mm -hmm. upset all the time, because you've learned how to build a healthy relationship with the Lord. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's get into understanding the mind of Christ. Before you. Get into the new part. Yes. 
Your review has reminded me of a spaghetti sauce. Okay. You cook your spaghetti sauce and you taste it on that first date and it tastes good. Yeah. The next day but then better. when you don't put it in the refrigerator or whatever and let it sit, then you go back and pick it up. It is mm mm good. <laughs> Everything I'm marinated in, yeah. all that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, that make me want some spaghetti. <laughs> 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 talking to a bunch of people who need to eat. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, exactly. That was probably how it kind of came to me like that. You <laughs> start growling. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was some good eating. That was, I'm like, why is it so tasting? So good. We've only been reviewing for the last month. And you know, but it's tasted. It tasted so good. You know, but I, you know, I believe it really does have to do with because of the fact. Remember, when we first started this. One of the things that the Lord said was that He definitely wanted us to get this. He definitely wanted us to get to understanding. You know, the mind of Christ. What is the mind of Christ? That was one of His main things. Is that is that you have to get this. You cannot move into the next season in me without getting this. You have to get this because wow. it is like it's like life or death to you. You have to get this in order for you to walk in the abundance of what Christ has for us. You know, in the word it says and John said it says that the thief comes but to steal, kill and destroy. But I came that you might have life and life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. Well a lot of us what we've been doing is we've been living life and I had put this on journey, but we have not been living life more abundantly. And he's saying in this season in order for you to live life more abundantly you must understand how my mind operated so that you can begin to flow and operate the way I operated and live in a life of more abundance. Live in, live in a life better than what you've ever lived before. You know, you have to get tired of just living. I mean, yeah. really, you got to get to the place where, Lord, I'm just yeah. tired of just living. This yeah. is just ridiculous. Yeah. I, I don't want to just live. I want to live in that place of life more abundantly that you said I can have. And how, tell me, how do I get it? Well, you get it through having the mind of Christ and operating the way that he said to operate. That's how you get that. That's how you live in that place. Because you got, we got to change up our thoughts first in order for us to live in that place. If I don't change up my thoughts, then how can I live a life more abundantly? Because life more abundantly is, again, that mind that's set in, uh, in eternity, not set in time, but outside of time. Outside of time. So you have to choose to be tired of living, the, just living day by day. Because that is not his promises for us. Mm -hmm. There's so much more that he requires of us and wants us to attain to. And he really is saying, I'm requiring this of you. I'm requiring you to have my mind to operate and function the way I operate. I am requiring, this is a requirement that I'm giving you. In order for you to have life more abundantly. That's what he's saying. Alright. In Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 and 2. It says. Um, and there came forth. A rod out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. That is Jesus of course. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. That is the spirit of wisdom. And understanding. The mm. spirit of counsel and might. Thank you Lord. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Yes. And remember what, I, what the Lord said was that in order, in order to understand the mind of Christ is that you have to see what he operated with. And what he operated with, he operated with those seven spirits of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the first one was, what did we say? Is the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, which is also power or strength. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He operated with all of those things on the inside of him. And because he operated with those seven spirits, which seven is the number of completion. That means his mind was complete in the Father. It, there was nothing else left out. There was nothing that needed to be added. There was nothing that, was, that needed to be subtracted. Why? Because his mind was complete. Complete as the mind of God. Thank you. Lord. Because he operated with those seven things. And because we have a tendency to operate outside of the seven spirits of God. We have a tendency to operate with more knowledge. And we, we don't ask 
for more wisdom. We have a tendency to operate with wanting the fear of the Lord, but yet we have never understood his wisdom. My, We've never my. understood his counsel. We've never my, understood my. his power, but yet we've been wanting other things. And what he is saying is that in order for you to have a life more abundantly and to operate the way I operated and the way my apostles operated is that you must have those seven spirits that are operating in your own mind, in your own life. Mm -hmm. And don't think that one is more important than the other. All seven of them are mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Every last one of them. If they weren't, he wouldn't have talked about them all throughout the whole Bible. He talked about them in Zechariah. He talked about them in Revelation. It's important that we have every last one of those. Every last one of those. All right? In Colossians, um, which we had already talked about, it said chapter 3, verse 2 and 3, set your mind on things above once again, remembering to, to put, position your mind on the things that are, in, that are in, in, in heaven. Position your mind on the things that are in heaven, on what he's saying. Look, this is the mind that I operate with. This is, this is where I am. I'm seated in heavenly places with my Father, and so are you. So I need you to position your mind in that place and know that you are seated in this place also. And because you are seated in this place also, you now have the ability to operate the way I operated. You can have my mind. You can have my mind. I'm already offering it to you because you're seated up here with me. So you will think the way I think. You will operate the way I operate. And while you're here on the earth, you're going to move the way I moved. Why? Because you're going to have my mindset. And because of the fact that you're seated in heavenly places where his kingdom is, you will now have the ability to see how God's kingdom actually operates and functions. And as because I can see that in the spirit realm, because I'm seated up there with him, that means I can take what I see up there and cause here to look just like up there. Because I'm understanding how his kingdom operates. But I can't understand it without the seven spirits of God. Praise God. I can't get it without that. All right?